Let's, th th this, this book, John, uh, a fascinating sort of dive, delve into the murky world of espionage, uh, particularly sort of shining a light on the world of, of Russian espionage. Mm. I, it seems in light of recent events, it's, it's all the more tangible. Yes, of course, I was a bit irritated when all these things came out. I mean, uh, of course, these are big events and one shouldn't be irritated by them, but... You know, I, I, I would have liked my book to come out uh, in, in a kind of uh, the absence of anything that the Russians were doing. So people might scratch their heads and say, is that really possible? Yeah. Whereas now, of course, they just think, well, it, you know, it's happening was all there around anything, us. Was there anything that you left out? Because you thought, oh, no, no, they'll, they'll never believe it. And then all of a sudden <laughs> we've got some, you know, we've got the, the, the whole poisoning and then the, 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 the four agents being expelled from the Netherlands with their listening gear in the back of a car. It just seems... I know, I mean, it's extraordinary, yeah. isn't it? But I think it does show what, uh, what is going on kind of under the surface all the time. I've made absolutely certain, I suppose because I am a, a, a journalist and I, I want to be truthful and factual, so uh, perhaps unlike uh, some other novelists, I, I wanted to stick absolutely to, if not the facts, then to the almost certain likely mm. okay, yeah. things. So that, that I think there's only one thing in my entire book that I actually invented. Everything else either happened to me or to, or to people that I know. Um, you are the sort of, uh, for us who are, Ben and I and Charlotte, who are a little bit younger than you, you <laughs> yeah. are the one that we watched... Actually, I think all three of you together. <laughs> oh, about my age. Rubbish, rubbish. <clears throat> we watched you on TV and, and you're one of those people that inspire, inspired us to want to be journalists and, and, mm. and, and it's so admiring of what you do. That I was flabbergasted to find that you'd had this situation where you felt someone, your senior person at the BBC, was trying to get rid of you because of your age. And, in fact, you actually took your revenge in this book a little bit, well, didn't you? Well, <laughs> yes, slightly <laughs> awkward, really. Um, yes, I mean, I don't think it was... Uh, I, I think there was a sort of general feeling. We had a change of, of management some years ago, and I think it was a feeling that mm. there were too many mm. old, old white-haired men... Uh, at the top of, of the BBC, you know, there's me, but there's a, a, a bunch of others. Um, and I think the feeling was, let's, let's sort of help them mm. towards the exit, which is fine, except that, I, I mean, I'm, I, you know, I, I am 74, but I feel um, just as, as good as active um, and as, mm. as uh, uh, you know, able to do the job as I was when I was 34. In fact, but a bit better now because I know what to avoid and uh, how to be careful. So I did. I did write this. Uh, I did write this book as not ex not an act of revenge at all, but as a, a way of sort of uh, you know the hero is constantly who is also rather sort of large ramshackle like myself and <laughs> uh, elderly um, and being pushed towards the end. But then it changed. And the boss that was trying to do all this left, and a really good friend of mine came in, and she said to me, "You're part of the history of BBC News." And she so had to so start writing nice I had things to rewrite again. it. <laughs> and so it wasn't a kind of large BBC style organisation. It was another organisation, television news organisation. But on I a went, different channel somewhere. A yeah. different channel. A different I won't network. say which. Yes. Uh, this, uh, and, and not just about the BBC, but um, do you think there is a general urge? in companies to have more women in senior positions, perhaps a greater ethnic diversity, that actually, for people like yourself, can create problems the other way? Well, uh, there's nothing remotely wrong. In fact, there's everything right about wanting to get a proper, a proper balance uh, in your workforce that represents the people mm. that you're broadcasting mm. to. That must be right. I mean, it, mm. it, and it can't be right to have lots and lots of old white blokes clogging up the system. I mean, of course, I, I, I accept that entirely. Um, it's just that, um, you know, you'd like, you'd like there to be a little bit of discrimination about mm. which ones you get rid of, which mm. ones are actually beyond the... Mm. you know, beyond their sell-by date. I mean, no doubt that'll be me in six mm. months' time. But at the moment, I feel that I can hack it and I'm, I'm really grateful, actually, to be given a, 
a chance to carry on. Uh, we want you to. We absolutely <laughs> we do. Uh, there's a royal wedding happening mm. today, and I was looking through some of your it. previous interviews, and I saw that you once exposed yourself to the Queen a oh, long time ago. Would I? <gasps> no, no, I no. I had no. to ask, just because it's that day, uh, John, <laughs> can you just share that story briefly for us? Yes. Uh, it was in uh, Lusaka in Zambia, and the Queen was opening the um, <laughs> Commonwealth Conference. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, I wonder where you were going with that. <laughs> 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 and we, um, I, we were late. My team and I were late. Uh, we had to run across a big open field and climb a barbed wire <gasps> fence. Right. And we had a wonderful uh, and gorgeous uh, um, uh, South African sound recordist. And um, she, as she and I climbed over the, the fence at the same moment, she dislodged a bit of barbed wire which stuck in my trousers and ripped them from wow. top to bottom. <laughs> and so my, my, my bright blue underpants <laughs> shone out and there was the Queen watching. <laughs> and uh, not only the Queen, but about 70,000 other people. <laughs> And at first, only about 10,000 noticed, but <laughs> after a bit, everybody was standing up applauding oh, me. No. It was very, very painful. And uh, I met, uh, the, the, there was a reception where the Queen was, uh, 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 where, where we were, where the, where the Queen was, where the, was hosting, and she came up to me and she said, I've been seeing a lot of you lately. <laughs> <laughs> Just wonderfully brilliant. dry, what a turn of phrase <laughs> uh, John thank you so much for coming and joining us best of luck with the book, Moscow Midnight is, uh, is the novel and as Kate said it is a really intriguing Great. feel and yeah. book. you get a sense that a lot of this that he's writing about John's actually lived as well, really lovely to meet thank you thank you